Jake Pushy was busy studying strokes when news emerged about the coronavirus. A research scientist at the Cerebrovascular Center at the University of Saskatchewan, he heard how COVID-19 was sabotaging blood vessels, triggering inflammation and causing blood clots. And he knew he had to act. And so when COVID hit and you began to hear about the symptoms, what went through your head? Well, as a curious scientist, this was an opportunity to learn something new. I realized that the lining of the blood vessels uh, just like the lungs that everyone's worried about with COVID, uh, those linings of the blood vessels should also be an ideal target for the coronavirus to attack. But you decided to pivot to look specifically into this. Why did you do that? I think as scientists, we've also got a moral obligation that if we think we can help and contribute, then we absolutely have to step up. And, and make that contribution and, and do whatever we can. He happened to have a powerful tool in his arsenal, the only one of its kind in Canada, right here at the University of Saskatchewan in Saskatoon. Under this roof at the Canadian light source lies a synchrotron, a state-of-the-art particle accelerator, offering scientists a window into the innermost workings of matter. The synchrotron blasts electrons around a loop at nearly the speed of light, a process that unlocks vast amounts of energy, creating beams of highly focused light, millions of times brighter than the sun. Light that can shine through all kinds of materials. For Jake Pushy's research, it's tissue samples infected with COVID-19. Without the synchrotron, we simply wouldn't be able to do the majority of our investigations because we can zoom right in and look at individual cells and what's changing with those cells and then we can zoom out and look at that effect at the whole organ and then at the organism level. And what is the hypothesis? What are you looking at? What we're looking at is the long-term effects of what may happen in a subset of individuals going into the future. From the COVID long haulers, probably about 10% of the cases uh, of coronavirus infections. And we're hypothesizing some of those cases probably have this underlying component of vascular changes that have occurred. And those people are gonna carry those changes with them uh, into, the, into the future. And it's gonna modify their, their health risks for, for lots of other things. They use tissue samples from COVID infected hamsters. Human tissue samples are difficult to obtain and to handle. As researchers have come to know the disease better, they are focusing on the body's network of arteries, veins, and capillaries that stretch more than 96,000 kilometers. The virus can damage the inner layer of cells lining every vessel, the endothelium. What we do see in the severe COVID cases is the lining on the, on the inside of the blood vessels that becomes infected causes inflammation and swelling around the blood vessels. And what that causes is for, for the blood vessels to, to contract and clamp down. So there's, there's just less area for that blood to flow through in the blood vessels. If you just reduce blood flow to the heart, you can have life-threatening arrhythmias, so disruptions in the contraction of the heart. You can also have uh, reduced kidney function if there's reduced blood flow to the kidneys. Certainly the brain, lots of people report brain fog and other cognitive impairments. And these, these are all part and parcel of, of other vascular disorders that, that have already been well studied for decades. And we're now pulling a lot of these pieces together and seeing that they, they do fit into this puzzle with COVID infection. In COVID's wake, damaged blood vessels could form scar tissue and a lifetime of health problems. If you've got any scars uh, visible on the outside of your body, that scar tissue uh, doesn't have pores, so you don't sweat through your scar. Uh, you, you won't grow hair out of your scar. So the same thing happens, for example, in the lung. And lots of those patients are cautioned about the fact that you know they've they've got some scar tissue built up in the lungs that's effectively what this is and that means that a, a 
portion of that lung tissue is no longer functional. So it's a, it's a similar thing with the changes in the tissue surrounding blood vessels. And we see this in other vascular disorders is prolonged inflammation uh, causes permanent restructuring and remodeling. We are hearing reports now of some men having erectile dysfunction months after having COVID. Is that potentially related to blood vessels as well? Well, that's a highly vascularized organ. Uh, and to get and maintain an erection, that's, that's a blood flow uh, problem, right? And you need vasodilation. You need those blood vessels to open up to supply enough blood to that organ to get an erection. So absolutely, any reduction in blood flow is gonna cause a problem. Do you think it's possible that someone who has had COVID and recovered, it will become known that that is a risk factor for other things developing later in life, things like dementia and stroke and, and heart disease? Yes. Uh, I'm very confident there's already uh, some very clear writing on the wall that uh, dementia, heart disease, stroke, uh, kidney failure, all kinds of these things look like they're likely to be at play. Even in the cases where people have recovered and they go back to their daily lives, they could be harboring significant risk, risk factors that they take with them into their future. I think just Getting this information out there that this isn't like having a flu or a cold uh, is, is really important for, for people to, to understand so that they can make the most informed decision for themselves.